welcome to MoCo's Most Famous Podcast. My name is Joe Yashroff. We have been on a roll lately. Uh, we talked to former county executive Isaiah Leggett last time. Uh, we're going to be talking to musician uh, Daryl Davis next time. But today, today, I've been trying to get this woman on our podcast for months. She doesn't even know that. Uh, trying to track her down. Taffy Nivert, former uh, member of the Starland Vocal Band. Um, and Taffy, I've been trying to get you for months and I just couldn't find you. And, and there you are in Florida. So why were you hiding from us? Um, because I'm like most fugitives, I go to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm so glad that I'm so glad that we find you. We're going to hiding in I'm hiding in plain sight. It's You're just... hiding in plain sight. Well, that's, that's good to know. Uh, we're, we're going to go down memory lane. Uh, we're going to talk about Starland Vocal Band, of course, uh, the, the famous song everybody knows, Afternoon Delight. Uh, the oldies like me know that, and some of the not as old folks know it from uh, Anchorman. Uh, we're going to be talking about Take Me Home, Country Roads, which uh, which you co-wrote uh, even before uh, Afternoon Delight. Take us through the songwriting process and, and how you were writing songs, and you, was it you and Bill at the time uh, in the early 70s? Late 60s. Late 60s, okay. We, I met him in 67. Mm -hmm. And we were writing, and we were had been writing for three years. Mm -hmm. And we're finally going to up enough nerd to do a gig out. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the group, which had been five, went to four, went to three, went to four, went to two. Mm -hmm. So it ended up just being Bill and I devoted to writing, so writing songs but thinking... Someday we're going to write a hit song. <laughs> you know, two hippies in a basement. Yeah. And uh, the week he graduated from college, he was in the same class as Bill Clinton. Hmm, um, although he took Chinese language and Bill Clinton took foreign service. <laughs> okay. Um, the week they were going to graduate was the weekend that they killed um, Bobby Kennedy. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And we had just finished living through the fact that they had killed uh, Dr. King sure. and the D.C. riots. It was a very 68. tumultuous. So that came and went. Mm -hmm. And then we kept on writing and went out and sang a couple of private parties. And then we were, three years later, after 350 bad songs, <laughs> we were on our way to a cousin's reunion of my first cousins in Gaithersburg, Maryland, uh -huh. at the Isaac Walton League, which my uncle was president of, our editor, president of the newspaper. Well, no, he was president of it, Isaac Walton. So we headed out there, and on the way, we're passing farms and cattle, sheep, some horses, and chicks and ducks and geese. <laughs> and it was a two-lane blacktop, and we had to go out Clopper Road mm -hmm. to get to the Isaac Walton building. So up and down the road, I'm driving. Um, Bill, always, the, the guitar was always in his hands. Mm -hmm. His playing on the guitar, just playing nothing. And uh, or playing everything, and he started saying, "Country roads, country roads, country roads." That's all. Mm -hmm. And then he would play a little, then he'd go to sing something else about something else. Okay. And it took a while to get out there, so it was, you know he would turn around and go, "Country roads," and that's all. That's what we had. So the, the seed of the song started on Clopper Road. So, but the song was never called Take Me Home Clopper Road. Okay, so I guess the word is apocryphal, where just the, the stories that are not true becomes truth somehow because they're repeated so often. And I can't tell you, if I had a nickel every time, well, you, you probably have, would, would have a lot more nickels having heard it, but uh, every time I heard that it was originally Take Me Home Clopper Road and then they changed it. So that is not true, Is that's what you're telling us. It was never that, correct? It was never that. It was never that. So it was inspired by um, Clapper Road and the scenery on Clapper Road, but that was never going to be the title. Okay. 
that it was it didn't have a title of anything, yes. Okay. It was a few words. Uh-huh. Um well, as time goes by, you know, history uh, history becomes what people remember, which isn't always what actually happened, but it's right. been that way with every single thing since the beginning of time. That's true. That's true. I think that every single thing that's happened since the beginning of time, most yeah. of it is simply forgotten or ignored. Yeah. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you. But we keep making the same mistakes over and over and over. Okay, go. Get, let's talk about something else. So we got back home, mm -hmm. and the song became part of a repertoire of of us trying different songs, different melodies, and he was very prolific. Bill was. Mm -hmm. And I didn't play an instrument, but I could say to him, Bill, I think that this thing needs to be sort of more like, like sadder at the end, a little, little bit not so bright. Because mm. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I knew kindergarten words, right? And um, so, so he would know. For some reason, he was able to translate what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. So we were able to collaborate on some level of I don't know what. And uh, we got back to Country Roads. We'd written a few other songs in between. One was, I guess he'd rather be in Colorado, uh -huh. it became a which we got before, from a, right? somebody saying that once in our apartment. Hmm. Uh, and so during the summer, we worked on that and worked on other songs. Mm -hmm. During that summer of 1970, the manager of the cellar door brought Al Cowell down to a club called Jamf, J-A-M-F, on Men M Street, where we were playing with a band. Mm -hmm. And Al wanted John to hear a song he wrote called, I guess he'd rather be in Colorado. This is John Denver. John was living. About, right? Rock and Roller Hall of Famer, John Denver, right? Indeed. Is there more than one? Well, you said John. I just want to make sure that our listeners know exactly who John is. So I just wanted to make that clear. Yes. Indeed, John Denver. Okay. John Henry Dutchendorf III. Yes, yes. Uh, um, his real name. And so Al brought him down, and we sang in each one of his ears, and he loved the song. Mm -hmm. Go forward. The following Christmas, six months later, we were hired at the cellar door as John's opening act mm -hmm. because the owners and managers knew that John was going to sing one of our, record one of our songs. Mm -hmm. So we were hired as his opening act. Well, he liked our music. He said, what else do you have? And he came over after all the shows were over. He was in a car accident in a car. We were waiting in the apartment. It was about 3 o'clock, but he had been in a car accident at Wisconsin and at M hmm. with the manager of the cellar door doing a night drop at the bank, at Riggs Bank. So he showed up anyway. His thumb was broken. He had um, no interest in going to sleep, and we were all night birds. So John said, what else do you have? I said, Bill, let's show him what we got of Country Roads. Bill said, it's not finished. I said, I know, but, you know, we like it. So let's show him what we got. So Bill agreed. And we showed John two verses and a chorus. Mm -hmm. And he went crazy. But now, I'm gonna crazy. You, i got to interrupt you for a second now. Was that song intended for Johnny Cash, as I read, uh, read in a couple places? Originally? When we started writing it. Mm -hmm. When we started writing it, we got to... Uh, the verse and maybe two verses in a chorus. In our little hippie heads in a basement in Georgetown, we thought, gosh, all we have to do is get this to Johnny Cash, who had a TV show at the time about the man in black. Uh -huh. And we thought to ourselves, gosh, all we have to do is get this to Johnny Cash and, and he'll make it a hit and we'll make a million dollars. Yeah, yeah that was a dream. Okay. That was, in fact, a dream. Why not? It's not we're really writing it for, we just had him in mind. Okay. We didn't know Johnny Cash from the mailman. Okay. So, um, but that's, sometimes you imagine that when you write a song. Mm -hmm. uh, 
he wasn't the only person we imagined writing, um, singing certain songs of ours. Mm-hmm. Um, so then John heard it and went, oh, my goodness, let's stay up and just finish it. It's really good. <laughs> so we stayed up all night, and we rewrote the second verse, which he said would never get on the air. Mm. And we said, okay, and we caved and rewrote the second verse and wrote the chorus. Mm. And so then it was a finished song on the Wednesday of the night, the Wednesday before New Year's Eve, 1970. Cool. And the next night we decided to perform it at the show. We waited till the end of the show. We came back out with John. Mm-hmm. And John said, I want to play a song that we just finished writing. And, you know, it's far out. Oh, gosh, I hope you like it. And we played this song. We had a, a lyric sheet that I had written. Because they were playing guitars, so I was writing the lyrics down. And we all had to read from the lyric sheet. And, I, you know, someday I'll meet just about everybody who was in the club that night. Because it was quite a reaction. Mm-hmm. And it just, the song is just its own little wonderful gift from the universe. So we started being booked as John's opening act, different clubs, because we would come out at the end of his act Mm-hmm. and sing that song, and it sounded exactly like the record. Because really? he took us to New York, and we sang on the record. Uh, I, I want to ask you, I want to interrupt you one second. So the, the other story about, the, there are many stories about that song, but that instead of West Virginia, the thought was that Massachusetts, because it had the right amount of syllables, how close was it to becoming uh, Massachusetts instead of West Virginia, the song? How close? Not yeah. close at all. Okay. And Maryland either. You're sitting there. You're sitting there, right? And you're and you're being creative, and you're using po- your imagination, and you're using poetic license, and you're reaching out into the ether. You don't even know how you're doing it, mm-hmm. and you're trying to put together something that it ends up being a song. And in doing so, we were able to. It's how we got better at songwriting is to be ruthlessly honest and straightforward and try to learn not just the art of writing a song, but the craft of writing a song, Mm -hmm. which is, both of them are very elusive. I don't know how I did it. Mm -hmm. Um, I find it some sort of magical thing that I don't know anything about. And, uh, Nothing rhymes with Massachusetts, <laughs> and nothing rhymes with Maryland. Right. So it's not going to be almost heaven. Maryland, Mary, Maryland. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Okay. And then it's like, well, lots of lots of things. How about California, Virginia, or something like that? Because it's, you know, a lot of songs use that A ending. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I left uh, oh, that California. You know, in my mind, I'm going to Carolina. Right. The A, A sound was very conducive to songs. Okay. So, uh, Sweet Home Alabama. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so we had done a gig at Roanoke College with Tom Rush mm-hmm. sometime be- between 67 and 70. Um, and we were standing outside on the portico at sundown, watching the sun go down over these gorgeous mountains. Mm -hmm. And we said to the guy at the school, what is that? What are we looking at? And he said, well, that's West Virginia. Um, That's the Blue Ridge Mountains. Mm. So that's the information we had. That the Blue Ridge Mountains and the Shenandoah River were obviously in West Virginia, and we were looking at them from Roanoke. So we came back home, and that became part of the song because we were given that information. So Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah River. So sounded fine to us, and they were pretty words, always pretty words. So then it became, we've been getting letters from a crazed fan. Mm-hmm. I won't go in ever into going to tell that story, okay. but he had talked about he was living in a commune in West Virginia and he was talking about it. He used to write very extensive letters written both sides 
Okay. Uh, 11 pages worth. I see. Need I say more? Yeah. And um, so West Virginia was sort of in our peripheral mind anyway. And as we we're writing this song, it was like almost heaven. West Virginia. It worked melodically and some, you know, um, syllable, syllable, syllabically. What's the word? So, 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 so. has the right so, not, not, a nice number of syllabically, syllabically, yes. Syllabically? Syllabically, yes. Thank you. Absolutely. When was the last time you said that word out I loud? I never have and I never will again. That was one and I'm one and I the know, other. syllabically. Um, it worked. So, and I had been to West Virginia. I went to school in Ohio mm -hmm. and used to go through West Virginia all the time. And... I used to stare at Ohio, at West Virginia through my windows. So I had a picture in my head of what West Virginia would seem like. I had very warm memories of it. Mm -hmm. So it was easy to say things about West Virginia. Okay. And yeah. then when John joined us. John Carroll. Um, John Denver. Oh, John Denver. I'm sorry. We're, we're going to get to John Carroll later. <laughs> oh, that's my, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, We had already, you know, West Virginia was the final answer. Yeah. Did, did you had ever... Had we written enough? Yeah. Did, I mean, did you So ever, when we rewrote the second verse, I was able to contribute a bunch because I'd been there. Right. So, um, Miner's Lady and Stranger to Blue Water. I can mm. guarantee you that's mine. Nice. And I was remembering Coal Mines. Mm-hmm. Miner's Lady, I was remembering slag piles, <laughs> and also West Virginia is a, is doesn't have an a ocean coast. Right. It's not a coastal state, so for the ocean it would be a stranger to blue water either way. Okay. So that, that is, seemed to fit. So. That is fascinating. Uh, and we we like. I was going to say. We so like this song. Did you ever imagine it would become the state song? I mean, it makes sense now that you could tell the story, but I mean, it is one of the official state songs of West Virginia and will be probably forever. That's pretty amazing. Uh, that is beyond my imagination. Uh -huh. Even when the song was popular, I never imagined it would be transitioned to that look because they already had, I think, three state songs. Yeah, this is one of four now. It's amazing. This one of four. Yeah. I love it. Love it. I want to thank That's you. Great. I want to thank you so much for answering my phone call. Who is this guy from Maryland calling me? And you called me back and I told you, you know, how interested we, I was and we are in hearing your story. And uh, you, you uh, surpassed my expectations. Cannot thank you enough, T uh, Taffy, for doing this. Joe, if you called from Maryland, you might be a cousin. I got to answer. <laughs> I may be a cousin. I'm okay. not sure if I am, but uh, I, I think. You could be a cousin. We don't know this. That's true. That's true. Well, I th thank you so much for doing this, and um, good luck, and I uh, hope okay. to talk to you again soon. Anything we can do for you, please let me know, okay? Okay. And thank okay. everybody for listening. Absolutely. Thank and it was, it was certainly as much fun on my end as it might have hopefully was on yours. Absolutely. I'm very happy to hear that. That was Taffy Nivert, a uh, former member of Sarland Vocal Band. That was very, very enjoyable going down memory lane with her. Uh, thank you, Taffy. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. And we'll see you next time on Moco's Most Famous. Have a great day.